Okay. Uh, I took a minute to look up the passenger list of the Lusitania. I'm sure you've been down that list a number of times. Very famous and, and wealthy people on board, many of whom mm-hmm. died, uh, including one of the Vanderbilts, uh, sportsman millionaire, uh, Alfred Gwynn Vanderbilt died. Last seen fastening a woman's life vest to her. And it goes on. It's, uh, it was quite a who's who of people, in a way. And those are the ones that make the news. They do. They were newsmakers, as it were. Yeah. People magazine and then some back yeah. then. All right. So what did Mr. Crowley have to do with this? Well, one of the things, um, one of the first things I found out was that uh, he arrived in the U.S. on Halloween 1914. <laughs> of How's course. That for a date? <laughs> arrived on October the 31st aboard the Lusitania. Well, uh, at first, did, that was, again, he? one of these, these little mm-hmm. things I came across that didn't seem to be particularly significant, but then... Mm-hmm. Uh, like a lot of small facts that don't seem to be significant, it became later on. I mentioned the fact that, that the British had briefly toyed with the idea of arming the Lusitania, and they'd actually put gun mounts on the ship, and they thereafter vociferously denied that there were ever actually any guns on the ship. Because even if the guns were there and they weren't mounted, it would still count. Sure. Now, the Germans also very early on, because the, the big Cunard liner was such a symbol of British maritime prestige, had various plans to sink it. Uh, they actually had infiltrated agents aboard the crew of the ship with the idea of bombing it, uh, planning mm. a bomb aboard it and sinking it in Liverpool Harbor. Mm. That actually seems to have been the preferred plan. With um, possibly uh, a lower casualty rate if they were to sink lower it. Lower right casualty rate and the idea of it setting, you know, as a, as as a, a reminder, Hulk right, and, and right there, Liverpool yeah. would, would be sure. a... Uh, Less less costly on the British, I mean, on the American PR end, and much more effective against the uh, against the British. And there, mm-hmm. there, there's a whole strange angle of uh, there's there's a web, I guess, better word to, better word to put it, of of conspiracy surrounding the Lusitania. The Germans are out to get it. There are people in the British Admiralty who accept the idea that, well, you know, it would be, of course, terrible if the ship was sunk. But on the other hand, it would just be a tremendous PR for us that the Germans did it, especially if they did it on the high seas. Kind of like knowing about Pearl Harbor in advance and doing nothing about it. Uh, there, one could argue that those, the scenarios at least would, would be similar. And there's a... Um, the thing about Crowley is that since he had arrived on the ship and since he, within weeks of his arrival, had effectively infiltrated the German Propaganda Bureau in New York. Had got, he wasn't just working for the fatherland. He was he had actually got himself into sort of the heart of the whole British espionage propaganda effort in the United States uh, and became something of, uh, of an advisor to them on, on, I guess, what could be called the Anglo-Saxon mentality, mm-hmm. or at least of the British mentality. And that's where I realized that one of the things that Crowley could personally attest to, having arrived on the ship, was that he had seen guns on it. And that was an idea which I think is is key, something that German agents in New York needed to be convinced of, brought around to believe, and then in turn influence people in Berlin in the same direction, that we are justified in taking this action. And that also works in with, with the kind of the whole sort of propaganda line that, that you can find in, in Crowley's articles and also the, the view he was selling towards the Germans. And part of it was the idea, was was selling the idea that, look, what we want to do um, from the German standpoint is to keep the United States neutral. We want to keep them out of the war. We want to discourage them, as the Americans were, certainly Americans at least like J.P. Morgan and company, were selling, were making huge loans to the British, in many ways financing much of the British war effort, and also um, a great deal of American productivity was you know, hundreds of thousands of shells, rifles, millions of bullets were being manufactured in the always U.S. Always big money in war, yeah. Oh, well, somebody's always making money, uh, and there was much to be made there. So there's there's this kind of secret war, in fact, going on in the kind of Manhattan front. And on the one hand, you have German and interest in German agents who want to do everything they can to keep the U.S. out of the war. You have British agents, including Mr. Crowley, who naturally...